Sanjukova dan jimbadan çürümler çöy nemle yak o çeyni madu nemli macena sanyo kovan tutuğu meyre dinleyin zan çöy nemle setele yani susur anakı da kan tutu nemle çeye çeye an geva çıma yine de al hadan ondan sonra geva yine de çöy çeye kovrak meyre dinleyin zan geva çıma yine de ondan sonra tarzil hadan mi kovan topur şu o asım ki diyi döndüğü yani jimbadan yani çürüm sonra süve komya ki anne gitti cönce çömya dinleyin ki Good, good afternoon. So this morning we spoke about how generating the understanding that we, like all sentient beings, are the same in wanting to be freed of suffering and wanting to experience only happiness. We take that understanding and develop the minds of love and compassion to the strength where bodhicitta arises in us, where we commit to striving to become a Buddha so that we can become the most skilled of guides and lead others to the attainment of their own enlightenment. Having generated bodhicitta in this way, then one engages in the, the activities, the practices of a bodhisattva, cultivating the six perfections of ethics, generosity, patience, choice, perseverance, concentration, and wisdom. And we do this also, though, with an understanding that if in our next life we fall into the lower realms, not only will we be overcome by unbearable suffering, but we will not be able to encounter the Dharma and continue our spiritual progression. We will not be able to live a life of meaning, a life where we help others in, 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 in ways of great meaning. So therefore, we use this then as an added impetus to engage in the practices of, of ethics and so forth, so that we can ensure that we do not fall into the lower realms, but we attain another a, a good rebirth and can continue our spiritual progression and becoming of ever greater benefit to others. Mm-hmm. Now we'll continue with the second of the four clingings that one should be parted from. And the second one is clinging to samsara. And the, the, the antidote to, to abandoning the clinging to samsara is to cultivate the, um, uh, the, the unmistaken understanding that samsara is pervaded by faults. That brings us to the 14th verse. To seek nirvana, the state beyond sorrow, relinquish clinging to the three realms. To relinquish clinging to the three realms, Reflect on the defects of cyclic existence. Dunga也是，对不对？俺是米呢，鸡呢，哪吒哪吒芒果，刚刚芒果，俺呢也是，对嘛？芒果也是，其实，对呢，咱可以，芒果来太阳嘛，来，其实，对呢，咱咱，
Nyangal In the, the presentation that we have been looking up to thus far, the abandoning or the first of the four uh, clingings comes about through at striving to attain freedom from rebirth in the lower realms. And that is, uh, and to the attainment of freedom of rebirth in the lower realms is the attainment of a rebirth as a human or a god. But, this, but such a rebirth, whilst uh, 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 required, is on its own is insufficient because Whilst one is born as a human or God, one is not free from suffering. This may be a rebirth in a happy migration. We have all attained a rebirth in a so-called happy migration, but we know that as humans we continue to suffer. And humans suffer in a wide variety of ways. It's, uh, what we, have, uh, we easily observe, such as illness, as well as far subtler su uh, sufferings. So even the attainment of a rebirth in a happy migration, and even an excellent uh, 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 rebirth within a happy migration, this still is pervaded by, by suffering. What we really require is stable, lasting happiness. Stable, lasting happiness. And this is, is um, the meaning of the word nirvana. So nirvana is made up of several words, but in the, the, the full English would be a state beyond sorrow. A state beyond sorrow. So this is a state of lasting stable happiness, while one has passed beyond sorrow. And sorrow here can be understood as, um, uh, as the afflicted minds. So nirvana is a, pa a place where one has transcended the afflictions. And therefore, as the afflictions can never arise, one attains lasting stable peace. Nyangandeva. Ta nyangandeva tarba sedi. Dunga dunga zuge kori dunga yo ya gi kyuzo de karasne kori dunga yo kyuzo de le da nyomo ba de le di go re cheza le da nyomo ba na ne de nyomo ba za yi gi di ta sin den se mari pa se ji res. Cheza di pang pi gi pang ba di pang song ba na de ne ทารวาเรติปังเปปังซองนะซาบนะเจบปังซองไปนะทารวาเสทุกโกเรสเจนะยังอันเดบาเสดิเดนิกิดุบะเนยังอันเลเดบาเรสเสดิดะญมมบะ
这个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是一个地方是
it's not peaceful. It's quite a, 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 it's not it's not it's not not a mind of peace. There's still a lot of over conceptualization, a lot of um, uh, um, busy mental activity, and seeing that as as not being a peaceful state, but knowing that if the concentration is developed to a much more powerful level, then that becomes the cause for rebirth in the formless realm. And in the formless realm, the mind is not overcome by over-conceptualization. So then the practitioner can give rise to the desire to be born within the formless realm. So what we see here is that if one replaces if one comes to see the desire realm as faulty, but still desires another rebirth where the suffering is less, such as in the form or formless realm, one is still seeing a place of happiness as existing within samsara. And this mind of attachment that is attached <coughs> to the pleasures of samsara is what needs to be abandoned. Mm-hmm. So ye come so may become Gondu Gavaina, Delia Chasin Javaina, and Delia Mazukin Tungo Marek Matonza, Delapon, Delia Tarbig, Tapshi Tung, Tapshi, Bizzi Mare, Bizzi Mares, Deninza, and Delia, a comesum you can't bango research. There's Sumbatilla, comesum ye shampo ponala, said Denny, come Denigi, comes some liana, shampo ponala, then you can sometimes go 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 real and Kobe ni mi jamba chanasit. Chesan kamsum de shemba de pawalan karche horas kan sam nangor da de ni kamsum de shembe shemba de pangu gor pana kan spangorasun kobe ni mi sam tang horas kobe ni mi sam na baina kamsum de shemba de yung mares. Chesan de ni za kobe kamsum de shemba pawala kobe ni mi jamba chanasit kobe ni mi sam tang ko tang ko che se gor da jamba chanasit na sho wo se gor. The first two lines here, to seek nirvana, the state beyond sorrow, relinquish clinging to the three realms. The reason that we are clinging to the three realms is that we are seeing pleasure, we are seeing happiness that to be found within the three realms. And then going on in the verse, to relinquish clinging to the three realms reflects on the defects of cyclic existence. So the first part of the verse is identifying the second um, clinging to be abandoned, and the reason why we do cling to, to samsara, and the s- uh, second two lines, second set of two lines, these show the antidote that we need to abandon this clinging to, to cyclic existence through reflecting on the faults of cyclic existence. <coughs> up, up to this point, we've been looking at the need to overcome the first of the, the four clingings. And here one generates the wish not to be born in the lower realms to having seen the great suffering there. And one rather desires to attain a, ha- a rebirth in a happy realm. So a practitioner who's a practitioner merely of smallest capacity, they are, have lifted their, their, their vision beyond this mere life, but they are desiring a good rebirth only in their second life. They're not thinking beyond that. And this is because they're seeing rebirth as a human or as a god is desirable. They have this, this longing. This, they, are, they are clinging to be born as a god or as a human. And therefore, 
they engage in the practices of ethical conduct and so forth. So they may have abandoned the first clinging, but they haven't abandoned the second yet. <coughs> It's possible then that a doubt can arise thinking, hang on, but we have told previously that we must abandon, um, uh, close the door to be born, born in the lower realms but, and, and achieve a good rebirth as a human or God and therefore must practice ethics and so forth. But now we're being told, well, you shouldn't be striving for a rebirth as a human or God. That too is to be abandoned. So it may sound contradictory. And <laughs> So the, the first clinging needs to, to be uh, abandoned because it, the, this it relates to practitioners who haven't yet come, even started to think about the sufferings of samsara. The, and they need to uh, come to understand clearly that um, uh, the, the lower realms are to be avoided because spiritual progression ceases if one, one is, is, is born in, in, in the lower realms. So this understanding needs to come bef- long before one can effectively meditate on, say, cultivating the wisdom, realizing selflessness. And this, so therefore one needs to cul- uh, 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 cultivate the abandonment or this first clinging so as to give great strength to one's mind lift one's vision beyond this mere life, looking beyond this life to our future lives, making the mind w- uh, wider and more expansive. And this is the starting point to, be, to have a powerful enough mind to effectively meditate on selflessness. Mm-hmm. Kiwichagoma, <laughs> 
Tarvas at Togo Reset, Jimba Nibe de Lea, and Bishi de Asun Gorua. And the Lob Sandmas on the Chibaro, Lobs and Mini Chickma Chick Sandy Chuba for the Jango, the Chick Chansa, the Jansa, Kuran Dija was a Midler or a two Yomar, Chick Yomar Dele, and Turmla Chas and Hungo, the Matin by Nikon, Yom Chinakon, Yataji Lady in a Turmla Modern, the Kuran Lera Yabodan. The reason for this, uh, the pre pre uh, presenting these um, cl uh, clingings to be abandoned in a specific sequence is because this is the definite sequence that one has to train one's mind in. It's a definite sequence all practitioners have to train their mind in. So an analogy you can easily understand is if a, um, a, a, a school pupil gives rise to the wish to, to embark on a particular uh, career path, they're not going to go straight off to, to university, leave primary school, go to university to study um, what, what, what they, 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 uh, um, they hope to make a career of. They have to go through the correct sequence, which is, is finishing primary school, finishing high school, with uh, good enough marks, and then going to university. So there is a definite sequence, and it's no different for ourselves here. So as beginners, we need to develop what we, what, as beginners, we're trying, what, uh, what practitioners are trying to do is we develop the strength of our mind, the broadness of our outlook, the far-sightedness of our outlook, and developing an ever more courageous mind that can persevere through, through difficulties of meditating on subtler meditation topics. So we start with the, the easier uh, topics to understand so as to develop strength of mind and a broader, more expansive mind. So we start with reflecting on, on um, at the re rebirth we've attained, its impermanence, and that at the time of death one can fall into the lower realms. And this, is a, this point is also one that we can understand uh, quite easily because we can observe the sufferings of animals. We know animals kill and eat each other. We know animals live with this constant fear of, of being attacked. We, we know that animals are, are abused by others, often by humans, and that they lack the mental capacity to develop themselves and to solve their problems. So this we can, we can observe. And then through explanations of the sutras, we can understand the situation of pretas, which is even worse, and the hell beings, which is far worse than that. And through this process of, of, of analytical and placement meditation, we can come to see that a rebirth as a human or a god is amazing in comparison. And that gives us the strength of mind to guard our ethics. It gives us the strength of mind to practice generosity and patience and so forth. And here what we're doing is we're not only making the mind more courageous, but we're making it more wide, wider and expansive as well. So here, as one continues to receive teachings, to reflect on their meaning, and meditate on them, this is what happens. Our mind is becoming stronger, we're becoming more open-minded, with a view beyond just this life. And it's here then, we are able to then have a foundation to progress onto the subtler meditations and progress to them and, and have our meditations be successful. Then Tobia Dundala, and Chimba the Children Subin Yemen, Jedi, 
The The sequence that we, of this meditation, we've, um, we've already covered a large part of it, which is the ref, ref, uh, abandoning the clinging to this life. And once one has gone through those meditations, one will have given rise to, uh, first of all, a great appreciation for what one has, as well as a, 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 a clear understanding of the, such a rebirth has to be attained. Because if we fall into the low realms in our next life, we will only suffer. And we will not be able to practice Dharma and we will be lost in the lower realms until those causes are exhausted and we can somehow be reborn as a human again. And then, moreover, we, at that point we will have uh, given rise to a fear of the lower realms and the need to cultivate the same causes that we did in past lives that led to this good rebirth now. And we will understand the preciousness thereby of this rebirth, but also its impermanence. So through understanding the preciousness and impermanence, as well as the potential for the lower realms, this adds strength to the mind. And because we're looking beyond this life, and not just sometimes, but this is, a, is, is guiding our activities, we, our mind is much more expansive. So that then is our foundation, a more courageous mind and a more expansive mind. With that developed, we have a foundation where we can now effectively meditate on the pervasive suffering in, 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 in uh, the human and God realms, give rise to the wish for liberation. With that established, our mind will be even more powerful, even more courageous and more expansive, and we then have a suitable basis to develop the, the, uh, uh, the wish of bodhicitta, the mind of bodhicitta. And for all of these, for all of these goals, a good rebirth, as, um, uh, or liberation, or for uh, uh, enlightenment, we need a suitable basis to practice the Dharma. But what we're trying to do going through the sequence is particularly strengthen our mind and make our view more expansive, broader, hence the need to engage in these meditations in a specific sequence. <laughs> Kurvigi <laughs> Then so, if you have a mother, you can't do it. You can't Nanzi 
你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你
but actually to even attain liberation from suffering. And moreover, for the sake of all beings, we have the required basis to attain enlightenment. This basis of this life we have achieved is ideal for both sutra and tantric practice. There is no basis, there is no life form that is superior to this, not even the uh, rebirth as a form or formless realm God. In fact, those uh, beings born there, they know that their rebirth is inferior to humans, not in terms of their worldly pleasures they, they experience, but in terms of potential. And it's for this reason that, that gods pray to be reborn as humans in their future lives, because of the tremendous potential that we have. Yeah, <laughs> Hopefully now it's clear that whilst meditating on the faults of samsara, it is not contradictory to be striving for a good rebirth in samsara. So whilst meditating on the faults of samsara, one needs to be striving for a good rebirth in samsara. But this is only possible with the correct understanding. Dilla don't <laughs> ก็เลยจะไปดูกันซ้ําเจอันนี้อยากให้ฉันนั้นเป็นสุริโกรวาแล้วอาจารย์จะกับดินาเลยอาจารย์จะเกี่ยวมาทําอาจารย์เรียน
the, 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 all three realms of samsara are pervaded by faults. This, this is an imperative step because without it, one will not give rise to a sincere wish for liberation. Hearing about liberation, hearing about the faults of suffering, sure, everyone says, I want to be free of suffering. I don't want to suffer. I want to be liberated from suffering. But that mind has no strength. It doesn't have an impact on our behavior. So, for example, we, we all know um, uh, that f- about um, what, it, what constitutes a healthy diet and what doesn't constitute a healthy diet. So we have this knowledge, and we probably will agree with much of what we know. But, it, but how well do we follow that, that advice? Do, does that advice pervade all our decisions? Or do we still enjoy, enjoy things that actually are not helpful for our body, that potentially harm our body? So there we have knowledge. We accept and g- agree with the knowledge. But yet, it hasn't had a strong enough impact on our mind that it changes our behavior. So that is exactly the same as what is being said here. With all these steps of the meditation, it's not merely enough to to hear and to understand. It's not nearly enough to agree. But it has to be meditated on to the point where it has an impact on our behavior and brings about a change. So another illustration would be if, if one is living in a place of grave danger. And let's say we're in um, northern Syria right now, almost certainly we would leave because the faults, the dangers of such a, 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 a place, it's very clear to us. We wouldn't be thinking, oh, maybe tomorrow, maybe next month, we would go right now. And this, this, this decision-making process comes about, or this decision comes about in dependence on clearly seeing the faults. And all the refugees making these dangerous journeys in the world are doing so having seen the faults of where they are and have given rise to a wish for somewhere else. But there is this process, first of seeing the faults of where one is, and then with that strength of mind, one is ready to embark on that difficult journey to arrive at one's desired goal. So those analogies show clearly that we need to reflect in ever finer detail on the first the faults of the lower realms, then the faults of the the human and gods, and then the, the upper realms, coming to see that there's nothing worthy of desiring in samsara. Because as long as one remains bound in samsara, one will suffer. And the clearer one sees that samsara is pervaded by suffering, the more that the stronger the wish for liberation, the more sincere the wish for liberation will be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Chunjunji <laughs> With all these meditations, there's a specific sequence. So here, at this point of the meditation, we need to come to see the faults of cyclic existence. And independence on the strength of mind that arises, independence on how clearly we see the pervasive nature of the faults of samsara, dependence on, on that, the strength of that mind will be the strength of the wish for liberation. The weaker we see the faults of, of, of samsara, the weaker will be our wish to be liberated from them, because we won't generate a strong wish to be freed of something we don't really fear. 
So here we need to, in the meditation, keep meditating on the faults, because in dependence on, on the strength of that meditation will be the strength of the wish for liberation that arises. We need a mind of great strength, striving for liberation, in order to engage in these, the practices that are required in order to achieve liberation. Mm-hmm. So now we come to a part of the presentation on how to see the faults of samsara, because we've understood now the great importance of, of seeing the faults of samsara, and now the text presents on how to, to do so. Now we come to the 15th and 16th verse. First is the suffering of suffering. This includes the sufferings of the three lower realms. If you con- contemplate these well, fear will arise. For if ripened upon you, they are indeed unbearable. Now gathering the virtuous karma that overcomes these, and continuing to cultivate the fields of the lower realms, wherever such conduct exists, spit on it. So the very first thing one does to come to see the faults of samsara is to meditate on suffering. So suffering can be divided in different ways. The most common division is into three. Um, the, the suffering of suffering, which is, uh, perhaps can uh, better be called the suffering of mental and physical pain, and the suffering of change, which again can be called the suffering of transient pleasure, and then thirdly, all-pervasive suffering. So these are the, this is the threefold division of suffering, and this is what needs to be contemplated on to understand the faults of samsara. <laughs> As you see in the first two lines, first is the suffering of suffering, or the alternative translation, the suffering of mental and physical pain. This includes the sufferings of the lower realms. And, and the term here includes shows that it's not um, the suffering of suffering is something experienced by in the lower realms, but also in the happier migrations of a human or God. Dunga <laughs> Of the three types of, of suffering, the first type is particularly easy to realize, hence we start there, because this is something we have direct experience of. So whenever a suffering feeling arises, uh, uh, this suffering feeling itself is the suffering of suffering. So this then can be experienced in many ways, illness, headaches, uh, uh, pains, aches and pains, Whatever, uh, these, wherever we experience these suffering feelings, this is the suffering of suffering. So this is something we already have manifest experience of, hence it's presented first, and of course it's so much easier to realize than the suffering of transient pleasure or all-pervasive suffering. 
ตาเดเนเนซาอันจิมิลีเนอันเนเนนาซาเดเนเกตุงาอจิกาเดเนอันเซเซบาฮาปุทุเยตังาซุกอนนายาตังกุมบาลาวะมาชาเนซุบุล
And then, not just with the human realm, but the animal kingdom as well. For, for animals, no matter how powerful their body is, they always carry about tremendous fear that at any moment they can be attacked by, by an, another animal that wants, wants, wants to, to eat them, often eating them alive. They can be ta- attacked by um, a similar type of animal, can be attacked from the air, or when um, they're drinking from the water, they can be attacked from the water. No matter how big and powerful an animal is, there's always another one that may attack and kill us. We think of the situation of, of, of fish, no matter how well they swim, no matter what size they are, it's like there's always another one that's looking for it to, to catch and eat. And animals that um, serve humans, whilst, whilst um, be- before they are led to the slaughterhouse, they tend to be bound in servitude and have to toil for humans. And then all these animals, they lack the capacity to be able to resolve their problems. They lack mental capacity. So thinking like this about the situation of animals, we see that their situation is far worse than, than human beings. Uh, then we should move our reflection onto the situation that is experienced by unseen beings, beings that are unseen to us. So we can think of those in the spirit world. Their suffering is, is far worse than experienced by animals. And, and indescribably worse is those of bo- beings born in the hells. And even beings born in the, the greatest of uh, pleasurable circumstances, the gods, they suffer from jealousy and warfare. So whilst we can't directly observe this, this is something though, that one, one should still reflect on. <laughs> When one hears about this meditation on the sufferings of samsara, there's a very real possibility that one thinks, I don't want to think about this. I don't even want to hear about this. I just want to be happy thinking about beings burning in hell and and starving with hunger in the presses and animals being captured and eaten alive. Thinking about all the sufferings in this world. Who wants to think about that? That's just depressing. Da Chizangani there are, there are several steps in this meditation. The first is briefly mentioned now, where you reflect on the sufferings that are being experienced by beings now throughout the, the, the three worlds. And the second step to, to the meditation is to make it personal. 
So whilst we only have uh, direct experience of the sufferings of, of humans based on ourselves in this life, we know there's the possibility of being born in, in, in any of the other realms in our future lives. And we think, so how would it be if it was me born as a, a hell being? If I am, am to be born as a spirit, if I am to be born as an animal, how would it be for me? So the second step of the meditation is to make it personal, to bring it in from the distance of what we observe and to make it personal. How would it be if I had to experience such suffering? ちょっと頑張らしいな。でね、あの、すごい、ちょっと、すごい、パッケージ、シャナ、チャサ、ジブルディエ、それだ、ボディケ、チャラ、ランドエシ、チ、シェナロ、テラ、テラ、マタナ
Tarayaga, this leads to the fourth line. So give an alternative way this can be translated. For if it ripened upon me, I would indeed be helpless. So here we've meditated on the faults of, suffer of uh, the sufferings of samsara and we've uh, meditated on them in a personal level. When this has been done effectively, thinking about what would happen if such suffering befalls me, this leads to a sense of urgency arising within us. So this strength of mind then is transformative or has a transformative effect on how we live our life. And with the strength of mind, we immediately uh, think about what are the causes that lead to suffering. Because we want to know what are those causes and we will readily commit to not accumulating them. So suffering comes from non-virtue. The stronger that non-virtue is, the greater the suffering result. If one commits a minor non-virtuous deed, if that ripens and propels a rebirth, it rep propels it in a rebirth of, of, uh, as an animal. If the negativity is, is much stronger and it ripens and propels a rebirth, it leads to a rebirth as a spirit. And if the, the uh, negativity is of a grave strength, if that ripens and propels a rebirth, the rebirth is in hell. So with that understanding, the a mind we've already been developing of ethical conduct, this, this mind of restraint grows ever stronger. Our commitment to not for, uh, 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 justifying any unethical behavior grows ever stronger. We'll make ever greater efforts in the practice of ethics as well as the other virtuous practices. And not just avoiding the obviously non-virtuous um, deeds, but of any strength of, 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 uh, at any strength of non-virtue, we will readily and with ease avoid them. So what we hopefully see, be, uh, uh, you can see here, is that these meditations lead to an ever-growing strength of mind. And through that strength of mind, the practice becomes deeper and more profound and more, more life-changing. Mm -hmm. Just <laughs> Here one thinking then continues as we see in the six, sixteenth line, not gathering the virtuous karma that overcomes these and continuing to cultivate the fields of the lower realms. So here one will reflect, if I don't ensure that I transform my way of thinking and thereby transform my life through the cultivation of the mind of ethics and ensuring that this, this virtuous mind is always uh, dominant, as well as the minds of generosity and pace, patience and so forth, and ensure that these uh, minds are, are pervading me. If I don't do that, I'm liable to continue 
to create the causes that lead to suffering. I will continue to take advantage of others to achieve my own ends. I will continue to deceive and lie to others to achieve my own ends. I will continue to, to physically um, abuse others. I will continue to, to take advantage of others, all because of my own attachment, my own desires. And in this way, I will continue to be making the causes that lead to suffering, potentially to rebirth in the lower realms. Ganna Gabler, and Kodu Horolia, Masonia, Shaka, Ruri, Shaka, Ruri Mado, and Delia, that Gaia Sky Homares or the Chesan Masonia, Gudu, Yawasa, Sawenza, the Jewel Mason, the Jomi Muras, Chesan Denigi, Minza, Denigi, Gusaya, two CS. The verse then ends with For if ripened upon you, they are, I oh know, the wrong verse. <laughs> Whatever, uh, where, wherever such conduct conducts ex- exists, spit on it. So what is so? Maybe instead of spit on it, we can say abandon it. So it's been translated in this way to show the revulsion that comes with the strength of mind that results from this meditation. So with this sense of revulsion, for the, uh, the activities that lead to the accumulation of causes for suffering, one will have the strength of mind that wherever such conduct exists, one will turn away from it. So here this, this should be taken to understand that the, the, the work of a spiritual practitioner is not part-time. It's continuous. Whatever we're doing, needs to be motivated by the mind of a spiritual practitioner. So here we can maybe understand this by if you're alone at home and your mind is going all over the show, perhaps uh, criticizing, uh, criticizing others, uh, uh, thinking about uh, someone you don't like or a situation, and, you, and the mind's in a negative di- direction. So there's the mind of harmful intent. At such times, so we have here, wherever such conduct exists, so even when one is on one's, uh, on one's own and not bringing directly any harm to others, but we are creating the seeds of suffering because our, we are, our mind is unguarded. So if we have developed through these meditations a strength of resolve, when we, we will notice this and we will readily abandon this way of, of thinking with a sense of revulsion because we know that if we don't, take ownership for our own minds, then we co- will continue to create the causes that will lead to us directly being born in the lower realms. And at that point, there's no time to rectify the situation. It is too late. Now is the time to do so. Now is the time to take responsibility for our minds and ensure it's always in the direction of virtue and strive to cultivate the causes for good rebirths so that we can continue our spiritual development. Middle, the net, 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 the net,
Mita Lumba Shandala, Tinkanga, so, so in a kid in a kanga kanga chaku. She's a dikanga dele tau gutus. Mara tawa masse, the mission dali in a kanga dele tayagi tapshi di. Nanga to cheer by the carillum, Luma is in Egypt and the Surum Soya de Rishas, Surum Soya de Jimbeyam, Sevenyam, Zurin Yalin, as Nedike Molamja, Dinam de Jeti, Maraine, Huda Bada, Sungi Chigis, Yam de Chigis, some some diata. And Yamna Hood Jet, and then Sosugi Shana in a Denigi Yamlin chair, Bizu chair, Kuma chair, and then Yamlin chair, Juja, Shimishanda in there, and Delia, Machia get up chicken in some chair, and also do some dancing on to get a Yamlin chair, that Cassandra didn't share the donors or did it, I do some dance, a delicate by now. She's a Machi won't let it. ตัวจะได้ดีจะเอาชื่อสมจะได้สร้างอยู่กับตัวจริงสมจะดีจริงๆดีเรื่องลุงอายุสมอยู่กันเนี่ยชื่อกี่สัตว์สาวอยู่
And through this meditation done repeatedly, it will lead first on a very superficial le level for wish to be liberated from this as a mere possibility to attain a state of lasting happiness. But if we engage in this meditation repeatedly over a sustained period, this wish will not be something as that we just merely express. It wouldn't be something intellectual, but it would be sincere. And this sincerity would be experienced in that it would have an impact on our way of thinking. Firstly in meditation, and as we gain in our experience of this, it will have an impact on our way of thinking we're not in meditation. We have an impact as we gain ever greater experience on a way of uh, uh, when we encounter others and we encounter difficult circumstances. And in this way, during this meditation, we're developing an ever stronger mind, an ever more courageous and powerful mind that will lead us to wanting to, be, to live an ethical life and understanding an ever, uh, through this ever, ever more powerful mind We'll be able to study and uh, meditate on the topic of ethics, for example, a topic that we would have meditated on many times, but in more profound ways, in finer ways, in more detail, and come to see how unethical behavior that we perhaps, or unethical ways of thinking we perhaps hadn't noticed before, or hadn't seen as unethical, we now do. And we can turn away from cultivating those causes that lead to suffering. So this process then is if done repeatedly over a sustained period and done in this particular the, the sequence that has been laid out over this course, then it leads to our, our, our mind becoming more expansive, our view broader and more far-sighted, not being dominated by worldly affairs, but thinking beyond this mere life, and then eventually thinking beyond just our next rebirth. And not just in an intellectual way, but in a way that changes our behavior. Then our meditations on ethics will be transformed. Our meditations on generosity too, the wish to benefit others, the wish to create virtue and the wish to ease the suffering burden of others will grow more, uh, stronger, stronger within us and in a sincere way. And from these two, in dependence on these two, the mind of patience will come about naturally when we face difficult cir circumstances whether it's in our spiritual practice, whether it's from our own inner turmoil, or it comes about in dependence on situations and, and other people, our minds of ethics and generosity will lead to patience naturally arising within us. And as we see our, ourselves spiritually developing and becoming more skilled uh, human beings, our heart becoming more open to others, then the mind of joyous perseverance and dependence on that will also grow ever stronger. We will delight in the virtue we engage in and want to overcome any obstacles we have in our meditation because we're seeing the great benefit. And then lastly, the strength of our prayers for good rebirths. The strength of our prayers to have good rebirths so that where we meet a Mahayana spiritual friend at a young age and have the strong desire to receive teachings and the karma to receive them and to cultivate them in our minds, that those prayers will become ever more heartfelt, as will our aspirations to, be, to enter the path of a bodhisattva, to generate bodhicitta, and become a, green, a being of great benefit. But to achieve such a goal comes about only in dependence on the cultivation of the correct causes. And those causes come about through meditating in the correct sequence, repeatedly over a sustained period. So it's my sincere hope that um, between now and when we meet again, that you, you are able to do so. So we'll continue then with the next verse next time, and this is, we'll continue with the presentation on the three types of suffering, looking at the second and third, the su suffering of transient pleasure and the su suffering of all pervasive conditioning. So thank you very much. Um, our time is up, so we'll finish here.